Hey guys, welcome to a special episode of the podcast, but as far as I know, this is just going to be on YouTube. Um, joined back by my friend, Chris Ruscio. Chris, welcome back on hey, the uh, podcast. How's it going? We got some new developments here. <laughs> we got a very interesting development. I'm sure people kind of have an idea from the like name of this video and the thumbnail um, on YouTube. But so um, very quickly, Chris, if you're watching this, you may know, you may not have known I'll, get, I'll tell you, Chris um, came on and did a two-part mm -hmm. series on the gear of L Lars Ulrich, and it's doing very well, like a lot of views on it, which is awesome, because you did a great job. And Thank you. And the, and the comments are overwhelmingly positive, uh, which is it's, just awesome. It's, it's so, good to see. Yes. But, all right, so uh, I'm going to let you tell more about the specifics, but long story short, 1983, Lars had a very special camco drum set that was uh basically a painted black <laughs> camco drum set which i think even in the episode i might have said like if you come across that there's not many of them in the world exactly ever. exactly yeah which we'll kind of explain this is a bit of a pre like chris and i are talking before the individual who may uh to kind of spoiler alert who may have this drum set gets on the call in 10 minutes is what we have scheduled here. So uh, I wanted to talk to Chris before. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. But we both have said this. This could be nothing. Mm -hmm. Very likely could be nothing. Mm -hmm. Is it still interesting? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Do we, do we need to like pull the thread and see if something happens and this is <laughs> you know, right right this you can't you can't let a development like this just go you know you got to investigate it check it out you know yeah <laughs> yeah so real quick all right so a gentleman named dennis i'm not going to say his last name he can later if he wants but it seems better not to messaged me on today is sunday september 10th so he messaged me on wednesday and i saw this on thursday because sometimes facebook business account is weird and you don't right, say it right right so Dennis said, I'm going to look over here and read it. He said, hello, I was listening to your drum podcast on Lars Camco drum set. I purchased a single bass drum kit with 12, 14, 14, 15 toms and a 16 floor painted black back in the 90s, which I still have with lots of add ons since and recovered it. It was odd black paint. I believe they are Camco shells. I do not have I do not have any of the hardware anymore. Uh, he put Tama Swingstar '80s lugs <laughs> all over it to change the whole kit. Mm -hmm. Which, um, oh, and then he said, "Any advice on or what I should look to?" I'm sure it's just a fluke. Someone painted it at some point, and then he gave me his phone number, and then I was like. Yeah, let's talk. Yeah, and I sent absolutely. It to, to Chris, and I think you texted him. I did. I spoke little. with him a little bit. Yeah, because it and, had his uh, phone number. and yeah. Right, pretty much just said the same thing he said to you, and uh, then he had to go to work, so he just cut yeah. it short. So yeah, that's pretty much the development there. So again, <laughs> what are the odds? The question's really at hand that we will talk to him, and, and you know, I don't want to mm -hmm. say too much about what we're going to talk to him before we even talk to him, but I would say that we're going to probably ask things like, um, you know, a little bit more on the story of how you acquired it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe why'd you get rid of the Camco lugs? Mm -hmm. Could maybe have just not known the like uh, pedigree, I guess, <laughs> of Camco. Right, right, <laughs> like, right. How like famous they are, uh, and just if there's any like discerning marks on it. Mm -hmm. So, Chris, what do you <laughs> like? <laughs> if you had to put the odds on uh, this of this being it, what what would you guess right now? Well, I mean, how many painted black Camco Renaissance are out there, if any? Oh, that's another thing. We got to find out if it is, in fact, a Renaissance. Like I was talking to you earlier, yeah. I want to see that inlay to even, you know, move forward to, to say that this is his kit. I want to yeah. see that inlay. Uh, you know, I'm wondering, did the guy take the paint off? Did he also take the original lacquer finish off? You know? So did he take the black paint off? Well, he, well, what I heard is he 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 got rid of the black paint and refinished oh, it, and that's okay. another thing. When Lars did this too, do we know if Lars took off the original coating? That's something I don't know. Do um, you know how hard it is to hand sand <laughs> an inlay off. an inlay off? So I doubt that Lars took that off back in the eighties and eighty three. But that's something okay. I want to see. I want to see that inlay. That would that would tell me a lot. 
if yeah. that inlay is not there and he said no i just sanded the black paint off i got rid of the black paint and there's no inlay well that kills it right there you know yeah so interesting uh, i'm i kind of didn't i think you told me that in a text and i kind of forgot about how he sanded off the black paint where right. it's a little but i also wonder if we could maybe get some photos that he had from like the 90s right right uh and i, I want to be upfront and clear with everyone that we are in, in no way trying to do this as like a clickbait kind of like oh yeah, yeah. M- making up a story like someone reached out and said i think i might have you know it could be a fluke but i think right. i might have the original absolutely and something like that you you have to dig into it you, yes. ju- you just have to yeah so can you remind us before we hopefully get dennis on here mm-hmm. what information is known about the whereabouts of where it was stolen did you say so East it, Coast? it was boston it was okay. uh, January 1984, Boston. I, I actually, um, I think it was on Nico Street, the club. I actually looked it up last night. I, I was thinking about calling the police re- department and getting a report, but I was like, <laughs> I, awesome. yeah, you, you better not do that. But anyway, so it was, it was a club on Nico Street in Boston, January 84, right before they went to record Ride the Lightning. And apparently it was in uh, like a U-Haul truck or a moving truck and yeah. somebody broke in and stole it. Yeah. And so this is also, we should mention, this is, uh, this gentleman, Dennis, is in Pennsylvania. So that's another thing. You know, it's kind of it's still on the East Coast. Now, if it was somewhere in California or if it was overseas, I'd be like, well, you know, that's that's a little. Yeah, that's uh, a different. Yeah, story. because shipping back then. And yeah. All right. Well, so, hold that thought, Chris, because Dennis is here. So I'm excellent. Let him excellent. In now, and I hope it starts recording him right when we get here. If it doesn't, we may have a quick pause and then re-record. But I'll see a little light. So we'll see. So. Let's let him in, and I'll introduce him, Perfect. and we'll, we'll go from here. So uh, here we go. Hey, Dennis. Hey, there he is. Hey, oh, Dennis. How I, are you? How's it going? going? Good, good. How are Chris you? here, too. Doing good. All right, man. I'm good. So uh, how's it going? It's thank going you good. thank you for messaging and writing in and checking it out. So, yeah, so I appreciate you, man. Aiden, yep. stop making noise, please. That's my, um, <laughs> uh, I, had to, gonna help. I had the same problem last he's, time. He's so. going to help um, a little bit with um, maybe some of the holding the phone and stuff like that. So Okay. And you said his name's Aiden? Aiden, yes. Okay. Well, we appreciate Aiden's help here. So, all right, Dennis. So we're rolling right now. Chris and I just did about a 10-minute talk, a little bit of the background okay. of like what what you know Chris originally said in the episode, which I'll tell people if they're watching this. It was in part one, about 14 minutes and 40 seconds in. That was when we talk about the black Camco kit and all that information. But um, Dennis, let's like just so we we gave some of the background. So what's the story, man? What what where did you get these? Drugs? Actually, it was um, I did some more thinking about it. Was it 94? Like I had said sent to you, Chris, it was in probably 1998 when I got it. Okay. It was um, a 12, 13, 14, 15 inch. Rack Tom. There was also um, a six and an eight inch. Um, they they were Tam of Swing Star, but um, and a sixteen by sixteen inch floor Tom and a fourteen by twenty two inch bass drum. Okay. Now the insides and the outside were all painted like a uh, gloss black. Um, I found it on Craigslist, I believe, is where I bought it from. I paid I think three hundred dollars for the kit. And uh, wow, he mm-hmm. said he. would I'd gotten it from somebody else from around Philadelphia, and he said he don't know where it came from prior to that. So, mm. okay. Uh, what um, do you remember? What heads were on it when you bought it? Um, the Remos. Like, were they like clear or dots or um, bl- they, ebony? Or they were. Um, I think they were um, the dot, the Remo dots, black dot. The uh, controlled sound yeah, dots, yeah, the CS yeah. dots, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, how do you did they? It originally had the Camco lugs. Yeah, on it. over half of it had the original Camco lugs on it, and then I switched them because it was uh, like an inch and a half or inch and three eighths. I forget what the Tama Swingstar lugs are, but they fit in there perfectly. So, yeah, most okay. most Tamas do. They're interchangeable. Well, yeah, because that was yeah, right, right. Um, all right. Well, that's interesting. Chris, you got any questions off the top of your head? So you you said you did refinish this. You stripped the, the black yep, paint I off? I stripped the black paint off for the outside, but I left it all on the inside. And since then, I've um, made my drum set the way I wanted to because um, <laughs> no offense against Lars Ulrich, but he's not really my favorite drummer. Neil Peart is, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I got but you. I do like some of the Metallica you. stuff, old Metallica, modern okay. Metallica, not so much, but. 
Okay, so very important. What what is the finish that was underneath that black paint? Um, it was kind of like a clear, which had been sand. I sanded down because um, it was a little rough from the paint being on it. Okay, was was there an inlay in the center? I believe there was. Really? It was a real, it? a real thin inlay, and um, none of that's there because I had sanded through <sighs> that because I did I didn't know that at the time. That's you know something special. Mm -hmm. I just I, gotcha. knew that I was switching all over to Tama Swing Star because that's what my dream kit was. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. We're back. We have Dennis kind of hold his camera a little more still there. So, um, all right, Dennis. So there was an inlay. Yeah. It did get sanded off, yeah. which I don't know I think how like deep maybe, those inlays. Maybe um, a 16th of an inch or something, not even a 16th of an inch, maybe like a 32nd or something like that inlay. I don't exactly know, but it was a like a white band around them. Oh, so it's just like a white band. It was like no kind of, uh, I don't know, blocky kind of C-shaped designs in it. It was just a solid color band. I don't remember. It's been, you know, okay. many, many years. Gotcha. Gotcha. Because it was like 2000 yeah. or so is when I um, started stripping it down to recover it. Gotcha. Because I had gotten me, some more kit to my kit. So. It, gotcha. Now, um, any information on the second kick drum or just it just didn't have it? It didn't have it. It was just a single kick. Okay. That's what I got okay. with it. And um, since then, I had gotten another um, 14 by 22 Bates mm -hmm. um, Swing Star and the rest of my kit here, which I'll show you a picture Ooh. of them. Right, right. Now, now let me ask you, the bottom heads, it, did it come with? It, is there it bottom did, heads on this? It did, not, it did not come with bottom heads when I had gotten it. Okay. It, okay. But, it, but it has the ability to have bottom heads. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, uh, you know they're, okay. they're power toms. They're like 12, 11 by 12 or 10 by 12, 12 by 13. Or so I can get a tape measure and give you an exact measurement of what I've got. Okay. Aiden, go get a yeah. measure. Did you, um, thank you to Aiden for getting a tape measure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank did, you. Did you uh, take any photos back in the day when it was like black? No, I wish I did. I was actually, I'm thinking the one band I was playing in at the time when I started adding more stuff, when I had it that way, I was trying to think if um, anybody had taken pictures of it then. And I do have a message into one of the guys that, um, was in the band with and he might have a picture he's not sure he'll get back to me on that okay because that would be where we could maybe do that sort of like look at a picture in 83 of lars on it look at a picture of you in 99 or whatever right. and like I, to see if there's right. any like you know there's a chip out of the paint here or <laughs> something like mm -hmm. that were you aware of the possibility that this would be maybe this drum set before hearing our episode? No, never. Um, I didn't even know anything like that existed because um, I, I, since uh, me and my son, we started a small little drum shop. And um, while we're doing that, I've been listening to your podcast to learn history. So that way it makes me a better person around the drum and percussion myself. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> and I found you by accident just typing in drum history. Next thing I said, drum history podcast with Bart. I'm like, okay, I'm going to start listening. So I've listened to numerous episodes that you have. So cool. It's a good channel. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Um, uh, Chris, any more questions? I mean, this is, yeah, what are you thinking? So now uh, you, you told me they were power toms. They were yeah. like, if, if, if they're power toms, that kills it right there. Okay. Well, let me. It's so, I mean, I've. I've heard of people, you know, they'll cut their toms down and they'll get a bearing edge put back on, but nobody really puts length back on a drum you know what i'm saying yeah yeah so okay if these are power toms that's it oh, okay well let's uh yeah yeah let's let's, let's check it out it. yeah because i mean again we and dennis i'll tell you we told people right up front right we don't know right. we're yeah. not trying to clickbait anyone or get us because it's right, literally right. what we're chris is like asking these questions right now and finding out right and i'm sure you were like you're hoping that it's lars's kit before you even show it to us, yeah. because it sounds like it very, I mean, that's a one in a billion chance. Right. If it were, what would you have done with it? That's the million dollar question. I probably <laughs> tried to done nothing with it and just kept it with my kit, just knowing it. Because I don't yeah. think I would change it because I just love the way my kit is and the way my kit sounds. Yeah. After this long, it is. What would you do if Lars? Well, it's not really painted black anymore, so right. it's sort of different. Right. What would you do if, if, if again, it's kind of now we're just kind of playing the what if game. But right. like, if Lars were like, "Oh, I want my kit back," what would you do in that situation? <laughs> I'd say it's not the right kit. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd say, well, I don't, I don't know. Um, on that part, you'd have to figure it out. Yeah. 
how many painted black right. Kenko kits are there? <sighs> Not many. <laughs> I was I just thought it was kind of weird. Then I stripped it off. It was like um maybe like a rust oleum black semi gloss paint. Mm -hmm. I used the heat gun, which, get which matches up. That would that would describe his the paint right there. But, yeah. Even on the inside of the toms, it's still the same yet. It's got that um black rust oleum semi gloss, mm -hmm. which. The rest of the kit that I put together to keep it in sync with it, I had painted all the other toms black on the inside, which still gives it a nice deep dark sound. Right. That's yeah. that's another thing. Oh, his shells on that painted black camco were natural, right. so that that's another point I, I'll bring up. So right. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, let's. There check. was no um, edge when I put the um, wrap around them. You know, like some of the other toms I pulled apart in the past and recovered, mm -hmm. they have um, like that defined edge where it would sink down in for the part that ever lap so it wouldn't stick out too much mm -hmm. i got yeah. you so it was originally natural yeah okay okay uh well let's check him out let's just see what you got again for everyone listening while he's kind of turning the camera um it this may not be the one but i think chris and i are now like well yeah. let's try and find this thing yeah I don't know, we're not gonna go knocking on doors and <laughs> peeking in basements but like yes yeah, if, if, if someone else has a lead if somebody has a lead i mean yeah, how cool would that be? Well, the Getting first, back the first, to Mr. Ulrich. The first Tom doesn't sound too promising because it's a nine by ten, so that would be a power Tom. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And eleven by twelve, twelve by thirteen, thirteen by thirteen by fourteen. All right, so. we'll turn the camera around here. Let's let's see the thing and uh, and and get a look at it. And I think we're all feeling the same thing. Of we all wanted it to be it. Yeah, you you got a great drum set either way. So let's let's see it. Here, Aiden, take it and walk around out the front porch. So, yeah. And this is the first time Chris and I are seeing anything for anyone listening. Um, Okay. Cool, cool setup. Yeah, nice color. Yeah. So you rewrapped that? Is that a wrap they got on there now? Actually, or? Um, it was. I rewrapped it back in the eighties, or back. I should say, back in the eighties, I had a nineteen eighties um, swing star kit, which was um, that mirror chrome. Mm -hmm. So I redid this in the mirror chrome, but I since um wanted to switch it because I love the black and yellow color. Well, it's got that 72 seasons feel. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, you got the modern <laughs> Lars set. Well, it's a beautiful drum set. I think everyone agrees that with that. I don't think I'm not getting the vibe that you reached out just to say like, you know, I think you truly did think this could have been it. It's looking like the this one, uh, as we've all said, probably isn't it. Mm -hmm. But I appreciate you reaching out that. Ab absolutely. I mean, yeah, Absolutely. And sharing your time and 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 like I said for everyone in, for everyone who's watching this, you know the let the hunt continue because that drum yeah. sets out there. It's out yeah. there. It's out there somewhere. Yeah. I'm actually kind of um, happy in a way because if it would have been there, <laughs> did he want it back? <laughs> I kept thinking. I, my question, my thoughts were: I bet he'd want it back in his collection. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. yes, you'd want to keep it, but deep deep down, the right thing to do right. would be like return it to Lars and yeah. put it back. I mean, how happy would he be? But, oh yeah. Um. So the search continues, yeah. Chris. Before we kind of close out, any final thoughts on this? I mean, well, I do. I do appreciate you know you contacting us and showing it. It's it's still a cool kit, regardless. I just um, with the power toms and everything. I just I just don't see it being the one, you know, unfortunately. So yeah, but thank you for showing us. Sure, still a very cool kit. Very cool kit. Well, thank you. No problem. No yeah. problem. And I'm yeah. gonna still keep on listening because I love your show. So. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Dennis. And I'm happy to have you on here. This one's probably just going to be on YouTube because it's so visual. Right. But um, uh, yeah. And again, everyone, thanks for watching this. We didn't really know what was going to happen. I've been excited since th Wednesday or Thursday yeah, when you told yeah, me. I was, yeah. like, oh, I was oh telling Bart this was like uh, that Geraldo Rivera episode <laughs> where they go into Al Capone's vault. I was really excited. It seems at least up to now that we've struck out with the vault. I'm disappointed about that, as I'm sure you are. All right. Well, the search continues. Um, Dennis, thank you for being here. Thanks to Aiden for helping. Um, thanks, Aiden. Uh, cool. Cool. Set up with the lights over there. What yeah, you got cool. over there? Oh, it's just a, um, oh, wow. a banner thing or one of the oh, um, backdrops. Cool. 
All right. Well, we will wrap it up there. And uh, Chris, maybe we we see what we see what surfaces on the next one. And yeah. um, and I, I'll tell people now that um, it has been requested a lot that Chris comes back on the podcast to do a Lars Ulrich studio drums episode. So mm-hmm. he's going to work on that yeah. and get some photos and we'll, we'll make that happen. Yep. So um, definitely get something going there. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, a lot of mixed emotions right now. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll end there and thank you to everyone for watching. Hey. Uh, Chris, Chris, as, as always, thank you for your time. Yep, no problem. Dennis, thank always. you very much. Sure, Appreciate you. it. See you. All right, guys, we're back. We're going to do thanks. Dennis was on. He's off. Thank you, Dennis. Appreciate I, you showing up. Yes, Dennis was great, but now it's just Chris and I, and I just want to do a quick wrap up real quick. I, that's disappointing, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. When he turned the camera around to the kit, I was, it was different than what I expected. Yeah, sadly, it, it doesn't look like it. Uh, it it's going to be the one, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because Dennis has been like out of town and at work, and we didn't get pictures beforehand. Mm-hmm. And but uh, appreciate led... appreciate his, his time, regardless. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. his time. But but it's interesting to even determine how that would be Camco shells versus Thomas shells right. that maybe had some Camco or maybe right. early DW lugs on them. So like I was saying earlier, the power toms they just they just kill it right there. You yeah. know, the, yeah. Lars's were definitely definitely not power toms. Yeah, as you could, power yeah, yeah. So that yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. that kills it right there, unfortunately. So the yeah. the hunt continues, like you said. Who knows? Mm. Maybe something will happen, uh, and someone will come forward and say, "Oh, I bought a kit that sounds like that," or they'll have a friend who does, mm-hmm. or they find it in the basement because maybe yeah. someone. I mean, if it was an '83 that they stole it, that person. I mean, that's. 43 years right right 40 40 years ago it was uh the it was 84 and it, 84 if somebody in boston is listening check your basements check your attics you never know yeah. all right well that's it so we'll just wrap up there but thanks to everyone for listening i'm debating releasing this and I, if you're watching this then i did release it but <laughs> we really did think that was going to be it so uh we'll see and maybe it'll lead to something else um so anyway chris appreciate all your time thank you always a pleasure enjoyed being here as always Yep. All right, man. I'll see you on the next one then. All right, guys. Have a good one.